Cell and immune therapies are crucial in the treatment of cancer and other diseases. The science and research involved is delicate, exhaustive and extremely expensive. So today I'm talking to Dr. Kathleen Ferlison, CEO of My Diagnostics, and Jean Leo, Vice President and General Manager at Thermo Fisher Scientific, about the partnerships and collaboration required to get the science to the patients that need it. Yeah, really how any kind of medical work is expensive at the research and development stage, is it not? Yeah, it is. It is. And in the past year, eight billion was already spent on cancer research mm -hmm. by itself. So we're not realizing that how much money is it really injected to get to these innovative therapies. Kathleen and Jean, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. We're going to talk about my diagnostics in a moment. But first of all, tell us about these cell and immune therapies. We know they're important. We hear them being talked about. How do they work? Indeed, uh, cell immune therapies are very transformative because they will use the patient's own immune system as a medicine to fight very complex diseases such as cancer. How it works is you will, uh, from a cancer patient, you will take blood and out of that blood sample, you will extract the T cells. Out of a pool of millions of cells, you will extract these T cells, which are part of our immune system, and you will reprogram, re-engineer them to become very effective killers to really specifically target cancer cells and no other cells. That's why these treatments are so effective, is they specifically target cancer and only cancer cells, avoiding side effects. Are we getting better and better at this? Today, we have to see it as such that already six of these therapies um, are approved and being used. But to really roll it out at a large scale, there are quite some challenges to overcome. And that is because every individual cancer patient will have its own manufacturing process. And since we take blood from that patient, that needs to be re-engineered and grown up and re-injected and safety needs to be guaranteed. What we want to do is really automate these, uh, make sure that the vein to vein time uh, from taking the blood and re-injecting it, that this is significantly reduced. On top of that, you know, the cost needs to be reduced and also that complex manufacturing process with automation will make it automatically more scalable so that we can really service the entire population of need. Where does Thermo Fisher fit into all this? Thermo Fisher is a global leader in serving science by providing innovative technology, instruments and services. Um, our mission is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner and safer. So cell therapy really aligns with the healthier part of that mission. While relatively new or maybe existing, uh, cell therapy demonstrates tremendous potential, right, in tackling some of the world's most challenging diseases. Uh, but unfortunately, time and cost, as Kathleen mentioned, continue to prevent us from realizing the full potential of cell therapy. So, for example, on average, it would take seven to 10 years to bring a therapy to market with a really expensive price tag of up to half a million per treatment for the patients. So the time and cost to manufacture cell therapy, the lack of ability to scale for the global population and an evolving regulatory landscape are preventing all of us treating cancer. So is that the expertise that you bring to and is welcomed by my diagnostics? Yes, so Thermo Fisher, we supported a significant number of the approved cell therapies that Kelly mentioned and we'll continue to do so mainly in three areas. So first, in terms of research and development, we provide specialized tools for scientists to advance their cell therapy research. So for example, uh, gene editing reagents, media for cell growth, and lab bench process equipment. So as you can imagine, the faster a scientist can turn a breakthrough into a therapy, the faster the patients can get a treatment. And secondly, this is where most of our collaboration in is we provide innovation um, expertise to help our customers to scale cell therapy manufacturing by automating and simplifying some of these manual steps. And then last piece is helping our customer to navigate this um, evolving regulatory landscape for this emerging field. We have our clinical trial services and our contract manufacturing services at Thermo Fisher, which enable a lot of customers to bring innovative therapies to market. So by leveraging this collective expertise and experience and navigating global regular changes, we collaborate with regulators as well as companies and customers to bring cell therapy to market faster and hopefully cheaper. 
So, Kathleen, when I read about automation and scaling and miniaturization and decentralization, these are, these are issues that you understand as well and can be delivered by your yes. collaboration. So, yes, what we do at uh, My Diagnostics and the first focus is, again, uh, the patient safety, uh, because we need to make sure, because cancer patients are already immune compromised. So if we were to, during that entire manufacturing process, a contamination gets in and we were to re-inject that solution into the patient, we could actually kill the patient. Uh, so we're focusing on that patient safety, the sterility testing of it. And if you look today how this is done, this is basically culture based. Uh, so you will take a blood sample, you put it in a Petri dish and you will wait for days to see whether there is growth. Uh, we will replace cultures with uh, PCR technologies. But what is so unique about the PCR platform of my diagnostics is that the heart of it is silicon based. And silicon has so many merits uh, because we're actually pushing a little bit the boundaries of what science can do in the sense that if there's a pathogen in that solution, you're actually looking and detecting a needle in a haystack. So we need to see and detect that needle. We use our PCR technology uh, and silicon to give us that sensitivity that if one pathogen is in there, that we can detect it. And we do it in a fully automated fashion as well. So there's no hands-on time and we reduce that vein to vein time significantly by uh, bringing that quality control automation into the whole manufacturing process. So what strikes me is how you both seem to deeply understand each other's work and, and arenas. I mean, and that's, it reminds me almost of an author and a publisher. You know, you both know what the other person does, what the other company does. But that must be very rewarding, I think, in terms of collaboration. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, to really be successful in these very big scientific challenges, you need to build an ecosystem. I'm so very fortunate to have the support of Thermo Fisher, eh, because Thermo Fisher does not only support us financially, but also with their expertise, expertise in sterility testing, but also reagents, decontamination of reagents, and then, of course, the whole uh, rollout worldwide. Regine, let's talk about rollout. I mean, you mentioned seven to ten years in the kind of standard way of doing things. What are the challenges of bringing therapies out to market to the patients? Yeah, so Kelly mentioned the very complex manual process. So as you could imagine, one manufacturing process per patient. In each of these manufacturing process, we estimate may have up to 40 process steps. And a lot of them are manual labor intensive, and also prone to failures, right, when you have a lot of manual intervention. And so this is where technology and innovation can help, where our end-to-end -end manufacturing solution can help our customers, like Pharma and Biotech, as they're scaling these manufacturing uh, processes by simplifying and optimizing as well as automating it. One example is in quality control testing, which usually takes too long and is too costly. So we launched a rapid molecular assay solution called Stereseq, and that helped our customers detect de contaminants and impurities, which deliver, help deliver results in uh, hours instead of weeks. And looking forward, we are very excited to collaborate with Kaline and my diagnostics to launch the groundbreaking sterility testing. And this is a game changer because about 30 to 50 percent of the manufacturing cost in cell therapy is related to quality control testing. And that's because the highly skilled labor required, the amount of material needed for testing, as well as the time. And the technology has the potential to actually address all three areas, not only by miniaturization, yes. uh, meaning using less samples required, reducing the hands-on time. Yeah, the automation, it's really contamination free as well, no errors that can crawl in, in that particular process. So it's all about, you know, sampling result out in hours. Yep. And as you can imagine, the sooner the cells can be reintroduced back to the patient body, overall better outcome. Mm -hmm. And then by simplifying, requiring less skilled labor, as well as reducing the amount of material needed, overall drives down the cost, which will make the therapy more accessible and viable. So this is not a journey from one to another out to market. This is a back and forth between you two. Isn't this it? is indeed with very active feedback loops because on one hand, you have the therapy that takes, you know, 10 years, seven to 10 years to really develop. 
But then you have so many pieces of the puzzle that need to come together. And we, as my diagnostics, were only working on one piece of the puzzle, which is patient safety and that whole manufacturing process. So we're not uh, working on that therapy. What's so important with only that one piece of the puzzle, there's already a whole ecosystem around that specific part. Uh, if you look at my diagnostics, it starts with a concept on paper that was worked out by IMEC. IMEC is the really leading R&D hub in nanoelectronics in the world. And then once that concept is in place, they spun out my diagnostics. Uh, then we, we, we get money to really take that concept into a lab prototype and into a scalable product. But in that whole development trajectory, we have so many companies involved. Uh, we have the therapy companies in themselves, like J&J and Legend Biotech, Galapagos, that really will um, guide us and saying, hey, what do we need uh, uh, to ensure that the product we're making is actually something that the market is really requiring. So during that whole development process, you already take your end users on board. Uh, next to that, uh, for our clinical trials, we work together with Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins University is already involved right from the beginning as well to make sure that the product we're making is right and is really serving a medical need. And then Thermo Fisher now, while we're still in development, already comes on board to ensure that their customers will get the right product, eh, to ensure that we're working on what is really necessary and then already preparing towards the scaling of everything because the biggest error we can make is something that works really well in a lab and you make 100 pieces, but if we want to roll that out worldwide, this needs to be produced in the tens of thousands without any error. And that's often the valley of death, uh, getting it from lab prototypes into scalable products. That's really the expertise of, of uh, Thermo Fisher that now comes on board very early on to ensure that we're making scalable products. Yeah. So, uh, I understand the idea of an ecosystem from what you're saying. It's almost like a network as well, but perhaps an orchestra, but it doesn't have a conductor. I mean, how do you coordinate? Because both of your organizations will have your own networks as well of collaboration and cooperation, as you pointed out. How does that whole network stay functioning smoothly and mutually supportive? The complexity of bringing these therapies to market require cross-disciplinary collaboration from clinicians to researchers, biotech pharmaceutical companies that brings the therapies to market, uh, regulatory agencies, right, um, as well as uh, technology providers like ourselves. So there's no a conductor per se but I think there's the common mission uh, to bring therapies to more patients in need. I think that guides a lot of the heart of the collaboration. So you heard one collaboration, how working on my diagnostics to scale a technology, right, as part of to scale this manufacturing. Another example of a great collaboration that we're currently working on is with University of California, San Francisco, or UCSF. Together, we built a state-of-the-art cell therapy manufacturing facility right next to their clinical research hospitals. Because of the logistics, drawing the blood from the patients, extracting the cells, sending it to manufacturing for re-engineering, and then sending it back to the hospital for re-injection can be very complex. So the co-location of a cell therapy manufacturing facility right next to a research facility will give research researchers a the ability to engage directly with cell engineering scientists as well as uh, manufacturing experts, right? How do you optimize the production of a therapy? Because it's one batch per patient. Um, so that proximity is powerful and that can really help trans uh, accelerate the translation from clinical research to commercial uh, manufacturing. So I think for all of us that are in this ecosystem or network, it is our role to connect and collaborate so that we can foster innovation at scale. I think that's gonna be incredibly powerful to bring more cell therapies to more patients in need. That's truly fascinating. Great to talk to both of you, Jean and Kathleen. Thanks very much yeah. indeed. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having us in this stunning environment. <laughs> yeah. We know that immune therapies are revolutionizing healthcare, but of course, it's the collaborations behind their development that carry the burden of bringing these medicines to the right patients. Without such partnerships, care systems around the world will struggle to deliver to patients the promises of medical science.